call the meeting to order and open up the meeting with the 2015 county budget hearing. Does anybody that would like to make any comments about the budget? You know, the time we do it. <laughs> Yeah. I thought we did rather well. I thought it was. You did get a invitation to the front door. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, will we ever go paperless? On oh, budgets? No. The county clerk is way too angry. So now, it's just one copy goes to the people, right? I email it. I keep, I keep one. Yeah. <laughs> we have to sign a copy. I keep the original signed copy. Yeah. And then after I get all the entities buttons in, I'll scan them and email them. Yeah, it might take me 15 minutes. We might keep the budget hearing open for 15 minutes just to get through this thing. No more comp claims, Kurt. Your fingers. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how clean the courthouse is? Can we just walk in here? Yep. Just say yes. I've had, sure, I, I've had two or three female employees say they really enjoyed going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I did notice the floor on well, the first floor when I walked in and it shine again. Mm -hmm. She's going to start stripping. I think she's going to start third floor stripping the floors and come down. These two floors don't have much glass on The first floor still did, but these uh -huh. wouldn't shine.
Hey, Carl. Okay. What I'm going to do is just kind of get you guys up. There's been a little uh, uh, change, or or I'm bringing another proposal to you guys to on the geometry uh, that we're going to have to have today. Uh, I found a little bit of information out. This is the packet I'm going to give to everybody today. I have one for each city. And what I was going to talk you guys have seen most of this except for the last page. The last page, and I'm just going to kind of keep going. I don't know if the EMS here has talked about the new Gen 911 or Jeff S from the Sheriff's Department. Um, it's a new addressing system that's going to come forward. But what they have done, they have flown the whole state. And this photography, they're about six to seven months ahead of schedule, they said. I talked to him last week. That was the email that he sent me. And what it is, is um, it's, it's, it's one inch resolution. Pictometry is going to be nine inch. Not a big difference there. The, it's all going to be all ortho, though. It's going to be looking down mm -hmm. like, every, like we've always seen. Um, and so when we talked about this at Ellsworth, I wanted to let everybody, I need to let everybody know what's going on. This, this here system will be free. Okay, and so it will be, uh, Jason wasn't sure if it, was two, if it was fall of 2013 photography or if it was March of 2014. So I don't have that answer yet on there. But it is going to be newer photography. And, and we be we can get this. We can put in the order. I'm going to put in the order no matter what we do uh, to have this. Uh, so my 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 plan was to hold off on pictometry and use this as a guideline. Still have the meeting today, and then see how many cities. How if we can get Phil involved. If we can get the entities involved before we go and purchase pictometry. Okay. Because, like we said, remember, for commentary, I want everybody to join. Uh, a good example would be, say the city of St. John needed a layer of, of the fire hydrants. The city would give us that information. Now, we can't do that with the normal photography. It's going to be harder to do. But with the commentary, and remember, whenever Maryland makes the layer, we don't want every town to hire a GIS person. That's not the intent of pictometry. What they're going to do is they're going to help us get the information to make the layer. Then with pictometry, with the layer, when Maryland gets that done, then see, that will be sent with pictometry, and then the city doesn't have to come up here and get our information. They'll get on the website, and it'll be there. That's a big advantage there. But with this other, the, free, the biggest thing is this is free. Now, I thought at Ellsworth they was going to wax to just agree to this. But the city of Ellsworth is going to join. As of right now, to let you know that Ellsworth County is going to do this. Pictometry. Their plan is to do this now because they feel like they need it. So what, we're go what they're going to do is, is we're going to use, you remember at Pictometry there was two flights if you wanted the second flight. So what they're going to do is they're going to order pictometry the flight of the spring of 2015. So we're then we can see we already got our free flight. So what they're going to do is they're just going to keep putting off that second flight. And it may not ever happen. And like Jonathan said, it doesn't, that's fine. So we're going to have two right off the bat to compare it's like a year and a half point difference. That's their game plan. They did, their cities did show up at the meeting Monday. And the cities are going to, the three that was there are going to participate and they're going to pay so much a month. I mean so much a year out of the budget. Uh, Ellsworth is going to pay them. They're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to go by, on the back of, we're going to use that sector. And they're going to pay according to how many sectors they fly. Um, the small towns are going to do nine inch. So they're have to help pay the counties. The city of Ellsworth, he's going to take it to them, and he's going to see if they're going to fly three inch. If they do, then they'll pay all of the three inch. And then the cities that don't participate or can't, um, they're just paid per map. Like 
like, kind of like we talked. Now, I guess I'm telling you guys, to, I want you to think about this before the meeting today, kind of where you're at. Bart and I talked to them yesterday. They're really keen in right now on which way to go. Part of them want it, part of them don't. Part of them want to go with the 911 gen and use that. But it's kind of up to, you know, it would be up to you guys then on what we do. Um, if Martin doesn't, before the meeting at 11, I'll have the answer whether, uh, if it's just Ellsworth and if, say, you guys still want to do it in Stafford, um, even though we don't connect, I still say we, we need that 5% discount, another additional 5%, which saves us $6,000. You know, if that's the teetering, I think they're giving to us. We all would. So, but I do want you guys to know that there is another option on the table now. Do you have any questions for me now, or do you want to think about it, and then we can Well, the only I thing I have, Carlos, um, if the cities don't do the three inch, I don't know why they would want to do just the nine inch. We're uh, already going to do that because they, because what they want to do. I think it would be simpler if we, if the county paid to do the nine inch countywide and build the city for the hours that it takes for them, for your office to generate the maps. For okay. Them. Okay. That's just me thinking out loud. Okay. I don't know what advantage it would be other than a money advantage. But I think simplicity-wise, I think that I'm saying I think that that way that would be the county, uh, the county's program. Okay, and that's a good way to look at it. You know, if, and if they want to pay for the three inch, I'm I'm, I'm great with that. Okay, I mean that's that, that's my feelings. Are they gonna be at the meeting or today? Maxwell? Well, Max, Max, yeah, Rob will be probably there, there, and, and I think Joe will. Sorry. Yeah, I think some people are Maxwell. Yeah. And they said Doug came up yesterday, then who's going to try to do it? Doug Brown? Um, yeah. I think he was staff with him. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. Yeah. Do a yeah, yeah, you're right. But Jane said since they had been in on the first meeting, they had been Okay. I, I don't quite understand what, what else was this to me. To take the free one and then sign up for the second flight, aren't they paying for it? Right no, now? they're, they're going to do the first flight. Oh, they are. Okay. But they're go there. But you really, if you think about it, the nine one one, they're thinking that is a free flight. Right. So they're still. So what we will still have, which will actually help us with the CRP, you're going to have one here, photography, and then you're going to have another flight a year and a half later. So that would be the equivalent of that second flight. So they that's why they're saying they probably will never do that. But they are doing the they're signing they're, up for the pictometry and they're taking the first flight. That's right. I, I thought you said they were waiting on the second flight. Oh, oh, that was, I, 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 I thought you said it delay the second flight. Yeah. yeah. And so what they you know and we always have hope that the person already put in their flight plan, you know, and then even though we don't touch if we want to do it, I'm just saying Jonathan I think will give us that five percent and Martin Miles out. There. But I will try to get that answer for you. Money County is no. As of right now, they're no. Uh, I'm going to tell. I'm going to meet with them Monday again and explain that Ellsworth is has committed, and they're going to. They want me to get with John, and then they want to put in for the flight, but they don't want it until March or until spring. Mm -hmm. um, they're an EMS guy, of course. They're connected with Swain County. And he said when they come across and the county lines and they have their tablets and they have the pictometry and they know more about what's <laughs> taking place than in their own county. He said it was kind of an advanced system. And the dispatchers help with the and, and he confirmed what Jonathan was saying. He they can they, they tell the fire trucks which way they can't go. Have you talked with Jeff about the what we would have to change in our dispatching to intertwine this? Um, no, he's, I'm, I'm hoping he's there today. Okay. So I'd be curious to know what, I mean, how we can, what, what it would take to, yeah. for the dispatchers to use. Okay. That'd be good, that'd probably be a good question for Jeff then, because I don't yeah. know his system. 
but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. So that's kind of where we're at. Remember, uh, with the, the free, it is nice. It will be a lot better than what we have. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, we're at the 36 inch. You know, the stage we're going to get one one foot. Um, that's definitely an upgrade. Definitely, I'm, it's 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 great. It really is. So I'm not going to back that at all. Uh, so I want you guys to know everything up front. Because yeah, I think it'd be up to the city. You know, if they want a three inch, then they pay for it. So we go with a nine county wide. Okay. Now, now, why, to make sure I'm on on your page, Shane, if 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 the city of Hudson doesn't, they're not going to do the three inch. We're I wouldn't say the smaller cities. I'd say the three bigger cities. But if they want to stay at the nine inch, they don't. Do they just reimburse the county for their system then, for what you pay? For? I would say that you know whatever, however you're going to charge them to generate whatever map they're after. Okay. Whether it's by the hour or by the, you know the job or okay. however you decide to do that. Okay. And it could be by the layer then too, if you want to do that. Yeah, I don't. Be, yeah, I'm just okay. saying, I don't know. That could be something like how that much or, time's involved. Okay. I mean, if you want to go on an hourly rate, by the layer, because yeah, it could be one could be tougher than the other one. Right. Right? You are right there. And I mean, that gives the other three cities, you know, that we're meeting with today, an, an option. Mm -hmm. You know, if you choose to, you know, we don't know what we don't know what the rate would be. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to tell them like what it costs to them, it would be okay. justification of what the three inch would cost them now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That, that sounds really good. I mean, I, I think that would be the simplest way to handle it for as many that, for as much that's involved. Yeah, and, and you know, going your uh, going what you just said, you know, we wouldn't have to keep having a meeting after meeting at, waiting for somebody to, to decide. Yeah. You could just make your decision, and then since they haven't participated, this is what we're doing. Yeah, that would save more me. Yeah. Well, so I'm just we curious. Could, I'm still not. I'm not clear, you know, in the county how how every department can use it with, without adding a lot more expense. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the dispatchers. That's mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know that that much about that process I needed to know how they would use it to in the in the minutes it takes to dispatch a fire truck and what roads you can take and what roads you can't. I mean I, I think it'd have to be pretty you know things would have to happen pretty fast. Pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Well so, they, they said Ellsworth Ellsworth carries the tablets oh, they do. with them. And and it's in every vehicle so if if that dispatcher gets them they get on that website then the dispatcher can lead them through. And that's what one question I had after I thought about the, the meeting that we had the other day was, you know, what what it, what would it take to get it, what would it take to get us to that point, mm -hmm. or or how the process works, I guess, to get us to that point. To use this, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. And that's why they need to be there because I don't know that answer yeah. either. Yeah. I really don't. On that. Okay. Well, I talked to Nita about this yesterday, and we wanted to let you guys know in front of you. You wouldn't get to see everybody sitting there now. So, so if you want to, I'll get over Jonathan. I'll try to get that answer about that five percent. Does that make a difference? So, so if you guys, anybody get that cost hammered down too of exactly what what we're looking at? Okay. I mean, that way we know. I mean, you can sit there and dissect that different ways and add-ons and what we're not going to use and use. And okay. That okay. Today our meeting will have, you know, real numbers to okay. work with. So what is Rice then? Uh, I haven't talked to you about Rice, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually supposed to talk to Barb today in Barton. Um, uh, she said there's actually one department that's holding up the way it's, it's working to her. Uh, but the others, the others want it. And they have they brought it to the commissioners? What are their ideas of what are coming or the next meeting? Can I say Barton's a little different? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
As of as of I know right now, the commissioners don't know about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're trying to deal with it before right. somebody takes it to them. Yeah. So I, I think they're trying. They don't want to be in a disagreement before they take it and right. take their time. So, yeah. So you know, I don't know. So, okay. Well, I'll get those answers and then I'll. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, you want me to take them? Or do you want yeah, to keep them for over there? I think there's a lot of them. Is this right? Yes, it's right. I'll give them a thumb and give them a thumb and give them a thumb. I'm going to You want that one? No. Yes. You want that one? I feel good morning. This one's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to be <laughs> This is the same one we had the other day. No, this is on Mark. Oh, this is the last Oh, this one's right. We've got three guys that are on the front page down on Mark's last one. Two of them were last month. And your loader breakdown? They they said, uh, well, we can get to her in three days, and he said, I don't think you heard like three days. And I said, you better tell them if I have to call, I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> not after we spent ten thousand dollars on this. Yeah. Thing. What's it doing? The power. Can you? We have I don't think it has 10 hours on since we brought it home from the shop. Uh, because it started using the other one again with it, so we just kept using it. Yeah, they yeah, kind of fix it. Yeah, yeah there's you know, the guy who ran this pushed me down this morning. So you better roll it out. Mm -hmm. They went lunch on price? No. <laughs> well, I offered them, and then they kept, yeah, you know, didn't get back, didn't get back, didn't get back, and I'm like, God dang, I need to go get this so yeah. we can get everything done. Yeah. And so I called him and I said, this is the latest. I said, oh, I haven't heard anything. I said, do you have any idea how long it's going to take? And he said, well, sometimes up to a week. I said, ah, I can't <laughs> I make a motion to do a salary increase for Mark Green from range six to step four to range six step five. I second that. We have a motion and second to do the step increase for Mark Green from range six step four to range six step five. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And then I'm looking at a laser for when you paint, and I'll bring the price up next to it. I'm hoping that will help us. The guys have, the guys <clears throat> hang their head out of the window like a dollar. <laughs> I don't know what else to describe, but they've been trying to line it up, and this way it should be able to put them on the seat. They we could, should be able to point the laser out there far enough. And I'm hoping that will be a lot better for everybody. That's not the same. Yeah. So, but I'll hope that. I can't. I can't. I, 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 I told him, I said, I don't understand why you got to do that because I've grown before and I just said, I guess I must be enough taller that I can see that, you know, the wheel. Yeah. All that wheel sometimes oh, it doesn't really get to chatter and that I'll take away from that. It's, it's kind of a cluster. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the only thing is their tongue's not hanging out. Well, it's not their tongue's, they get thirsty. <laughs> And we didn't get to paint in and all the way on speed, so. Do you get four street repaired? Yeah. We will probably start. We're going to, we still got some minor problems we're taking care of the patch and crew so it's probably not going to be this week. We're probably going to be a couple of days later when we start seeing it. So then, everybody's going to go. 
Good white sign checks. Yeah. This is that new record. Well, I guess. Uh, and I and I did call down and talk to Scott Moore, and he said uh, he has never heard of from the fire up the chain. So he was waiting on that. He said uh, it doesn't do me much good to try to roll the cage. <laughs> and I said, well, I can understand. So I'll give him another week and I'll get a call. I'll come up next week and I'll get a call. Hopefully not today. No, no bad. I didn't have to put the calcium chloride down there from Harold Richards this morning because she should be there about now. I've heard about it. Uh, oh, you did? Somebody wasn't happy with it. Such is life, isn't it? Dirt roads, dirt roads, dirt roads. That's what I was explaining. They all have dust. How deep were you going to work that in to make that say? A couple of inches. Two yeah. inches. Eat scaffire a little bit yesterday. It's hard, man. Oh, the earth pleasure, too, you said. It's hard. Uh, it is hard. <laughs> and part of the problem we got in right now is just so flat. Yeah. There's no crown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we can get a crown back in. Yeah. 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 That's all I got. All right. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to let you guys know um, I'm buying uh, five scanners. I decided since uh, the state replaced the computers, I'd go ahead and upgrade our scanners and that gave us some good condition. So, um, in fact, I already have it. The total bill is 1800 So, just want to let you guys know that'll come out of my motor vehicle. Okay. Just to let you know so you don't have a shock effect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Trey. Hello. Hi, guys. You got the floor. Yeah, which, which one's the one? They're all hot. They're all hot. First of all, thank you guys for letting us come in here and uh, let us take the time to present. Um, I want to talk about that letter first and just give you a little bit of an idea about Act 360. But before I go into that, I want to introduce who's here. This is Dwayne Becker. He's from the Mound Ridge office. Thanks for having us. He handles all of the public entity work in Mound Ridge. Uh, and so he specializes in that. And then this is Nita Johnston, and she's out of Haven. She does that stuff there. So, I just drove a long way. There. Well. Important things. They're here for moral support. <laughs> but uh, so they're they'll answer any questions that I maybe can't. But they're just here to kind of help out. So Act 360. For those of you, for you guys who don't, you guys know, you know we're in existence. Uh, we started in November of 2013. Full service agency, uh, right farm, public entity work like this, personal lines. Uh, our office is just down the road. 4th Street Abstract Building, uh, and it's myself and it's Alicia Decon over there. So there's two of us now full time. Uh, it's actually going really well. We uh, we we are really happy with how things are going. Couldn't have couldn't have uh, been better so so far. So uh, what what we wanted to talk to you today about is what we're happy about is that we know that you guys buy your insurance. Uh, is, is with EMC? Is that the company that you're with now? It's insurance planning. Insurance planning. Through EMC. Yeah. Through EMC, right. We're, what we like is that we know that in the past you haven't had a local option to buy your insurance. Uh, we're local. 
Um, or just down the road, everything's staying in the county. Uh, we EMC is the company of choice. So EMC, we feel that they're the best company to have your insurance with. Uh, they do the best job in this type of public entity work. Uh, so we feel that that's the company to be with. So and we can represent that company. So that wouldn't change necessarily unless you guys, for some reason, wanted it to. Um, the other nice part, I guess, the good and the bad with that is the premium wouldn't change. Premium wouldn't go up. Premium wouldn't go down. Uh, unless when we went through the audit process, if we saw things during the rule that we thought, we thought might need to be changed, we made recommendations to you guys. But it wouldn't be us coming in here and showing you guys a completely new premium package with a new company or anything like that. EMC would be the company that we would recommend you guys stay with. Uh, we feel they're the best company. So that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the process. That's how things would work. Uh, it's nothing really fancy. We wouldn't come in here, recommend a different company, give you a big quote or anything. Uh, we just we just like the opportunity. We feel that we're a local company. We can we can provide you the same service that you have. Uh, we do handle the city's insurance uh, with the MC as well. Uh, and I think that's on there. If we put something about that in there. So, um, do you guys have any questions about the agency Act 360? Um, myself, Alicia. No? Man, this is... <laughs> no questions on... Okay. And this is maybe not something we need to talk about right now, but I, I think I do want to go into it. Let me get these questions. If you guys were to decide to, to make a change, uh, this is going to be the process, and I want to talk about this just a little bit. I can talk about it, but it's easier sometimes to, to lay it out there and you guys can look at it. This is the process. If you guys were to decide to, to change agencies, this would be kind of the step-by-step -step process. First of all, what we do is we fill out, we have an agent of record letter, and you guys basically sign that stating that you're changing agencies. Uh, that then is sent to the insurance company. They'll then send it on to your current agency, notifying them that you guys are making a change. That then, the current agency then has 10 days to basically get a hold of you guys and ask you why you're changing. And you should, if that happens, you should expect a call. I mean, they'll, they'll contact you, ask you, you know, what's, what's going on. Um, if nothing happens with, with that 10 days, we'll become your new agent. We'll, become, we'll be the new agency after the 10 days, and then we'll start, upon renewal, that is. We won't, nothing will make, no, no change will take place until renewal. Upon renewal, we'll be the new agency, and then we'll start before that renewal problem, we'll start going through your, office, your uh, policy and doing the audit process and uh, negotiating that renewal premium, making sure everything looks right uh, upon the renewal date. So uh, the process to change is not hard, but they do get a chance. They get 10 days there to basically ask you for you know, ask you to stay with them. So uh, that's the process that we have to go by, and so that just kind of lays it out there. What does EMC think about that? I mean, they've got agents everywhere. They really don't care who the, who the agent is selling their policies. Well, uh, I mean, to them, I guess the they're not losing premium. Uh, no. I mean, they're not losing the business. Obviously, uh, they're not. I mean, we're not. They don't probably want us to compete. Dwayne might be able to answer that a little bit better than. Yeah, that's why this process is in place. They don't want the current or the incumbent agent to be blindsided in any way. And so it's it's a fair process. That agent's notified, obviously, if they care about you, and I know they do. They'll probably yeah. call you and say, uh, what's up? And, uh, you know, so that's that's the process, and that's why that actually protects the company. That is a company design process. That said, all companies use it. It's not just DMC. So if we switch That's what makes it kind of hard, though, if you've been well served in the past, you need to kind of kick somebody to the curb that's done all right for you. That's correct. Yeah, we understand that. I, mean, I, would, I would love to do something with you. You, you and I have known each other right. and it's local, but I, I, I just hate to switch in somebody that's done a good job. Sure. Too. At least for right now. It might happen eventually too. I don't know. I mean, we talked about this outside of the meeting, but the, the quote, you know, to be 
lower right. than what we're being quoted? Do you, do you think it'd be the same or higher? The or only reason it would change is <laughs> when we go through the process, the, the policy, if we found different things like, let's say, a deductible change of some sort, or if we added some sort of a service, a different benefit of some sort to the policy, that's the only reason it would change. But it could be that it just exact, stays exactly the same, too, mm -hmm. because we find that the policy is exactly the way you want it. Because it's with EMC, so basically we're just changing agents. We're not changing the policy in any way. It's not a different company like Travelers or some sort of, you know what I mean? So it wouldn't, not enough to, you know what I mean? And it wouldn't be anything that they wouldn't, they couldn't do on their end to, you know, yeah. you know change the yeah. So, uh, no, not in the way you're, you know, right. saving you know, a lot of money, yeah. Basically what it comes down to for us is we're, we're a local agency, so you know we would love to have the business. We would love to work with you guys. We feel we can offer you the service. We have the expertise with Dwayne and Nita, uh, and, and all of the other you know agents in our in our different offices. So we we know that you guys have gotten good service. So it's going to be tough to change, regardless of where they're located, because today's you know today's age, it's an email, and phone call. So it's not tough, but we are local. Money staying in the in the county, um, and we feel that we can provide the same. Same service. So, but I do appreciate you at least letting us talk to you guys because without that we don't have any opportunity to, to do anything. So, appreciate. I, mean, I would certainly consider it, but probably not right at this moment. Like, you know, yeah. over time, yeah. yeah. Sure. I think you know when we do come to the point in time that it's time to <coughs> quote. I mean, or to get a quote, I think it's going to be great to see what you can do. Yeah. You know, maybe there's other options we don't know about. Right. Right. And are you talking about with the different with different yeah. companies with teams? Yeah. yeah. And we've done that in the past. You've gotten bids in the past, is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people we can we can bid it. The, the thing about it is we feel EMC That's is the nice. company to be with. So regardless of whether we go out and, and quote it through another company, it might have to be a substantial change in premium, in our opinion, to make it to make you guys feel that it's worth changing because you're switching from probably the best company that handles your insurance to a different one, so it might need to be a decent savings to do that. That's the way we feel. Uh, EMC is the, the company of choice. So, just to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 I mean, not, I don't understand we can't do that, but we feel EMC is the, the player that we would. So, now, I wish we could come in here and say, hey, we can save you $10,000 and, and uh, life's good, but... Yeah, yeah, that's uh, what I was hoping for. I know. You know right. <laughs> right. We just, just can't do it. Yeah. But, you know, if you guys would consider it, talk about it, yeah. um, we'll, you know, we'd appreciate that and we'll keep trying. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, that's all I have. Anything else from, any other questions from any of you? I don't know. Okay. Anything that you guys want to add? No. Hey, there. Thanks for making it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> They're awful nice to come down here for that long. Yeah. We, we need to come check how the crops are in this area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Session for 30 minutes with uh, Joe and Mitch, the three commissioners, and Anita for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.
like a chair. Here, let me give you the no, chair. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, I'm like so we have to find you there. Shane Simon. That's you. Hi. Hi. I'm Carl Hyman. I'm Carl Kaywork. Shane Simon. You're a Kaywork. I'm Kaywork. Workers Cup. Huh. Things they want to exclude, what things they want to cover. 
Um, the other advantage is that pools basically take their funds and not only ensure cover the risks, but they take those funds and provide themselves with risk prevention services to keep their losses down. And Carl spends a substantial amount of his time on the work comp side going around and providing training and his expertise to the members and, and we have staff doing that on the property liability side as well. Um, and another advantage is it's just control over claims and, and management of litigation. Um, again, once you have a claim with an insurance company, you're essentially turning that over to them to handle. Um, they can have they work at boards. Our board looks at claims over a certain dollar value and approves any settlement um, on those claims. And then finally, you're reaping the benefits of, of uh, group purchase by coming together. And for example, KCAMP uh, retains a certain amount of risk as a pool. And then above that layer, we buy what's called reinsurance. Even commercial insurers do this. But coming together and buying that insurance on an excess basis, we get at a much uh, reduced rate versus if the county were to retain some risk and go out and buy, buy that insurance. Um, the key really is the next slide, which is slide six. And those are the financial advantages of pooling. And I'll talk about this a little bit. Well, the biggest thing is the low and stable rates. With commercial insurance, and it's likely you've experienced this as a county, you'll see rates go up one year pretty substantially. All of a sudden, the next year, or maybe two years later, inexplicably, they're coming down. And maybe your loss picture hasn't changed all that much, and you're wondering, why, why is that? Well, part of it is an insurance company is profit-driven. Um, they're competing with other insurers. They're willing to take a loss for a couple of years, but then they got to recoup that loss in subsequent years, and they're playing that market game. With pooling, you don't, you simply don't have that. The, the, the members are deciding, we basically hire an actuary. That person projects what our losses are going to be. We set aside a conservative uh, funding level to pay for those losses. And then in the event um, it goes over, we've, we, because of the conservative funding approach, we have net assets available, available to pay those losses. So what that results in is stable rates for you, the member. The other thing is, you know, insurance companies tend to have high expense loads or um, large organizations, lots of staffing, nice buildings, uh, a, lot, a lot of things that drive expenses. We're, we're, we have a very low expense ratio. And then again, that conservative funding approach. Um, on that point, we turn to slides 19 and 20. I'll just click there. Show you what I'm talking about. On slide 19, you'll see our property rates over the last five years. And they basically, you know, the slide are showing that they're coming down, and but basically remaining flat. And there's some savings there for the members, but in recent years, it's, it's basically been flat. I don't know how that compares to your rates over that same period, but again, it just reinforces that message that that our goal and what we try to accomplish is for these low and stable rates for members. Uh, slide 20 shows the liability side. So this would be your general liability, auto, public officials, law enforcement, liability rates. Again, very flat um, over a pretty extensive period there. So those are the key financial advantages of, of being in a pool. Um, it's why you know we've grown from uh, we're to now uh, 61 county members. Hayward has 70. 70 counties participated. So we're you know roughly around two thirds of the counties in the state, and this is why. Um, you can see our mission statement there. We'll support you with that. Our, the, the program stability. A lot of times, agent local agents will say, "Well, pooling's you know really risky. You don't know. You know they're not uh, they're not regulated. They're not uh, there's no invest rating. There's there's several indicators of, of our stability. One is the length of time we've been doing this, 25 years. Um, our strong net asset position. Uh, we have over 15 million now in, in net assets, and those those assets belong to you, the member. Um, it's not profit for the pool that we have to pay out to shareholders or anything else. It sits there and it's, it's available for you to be used for services, uh, to be used to pay dividends and reimbursements. Uh, there's independent audit and oversight. It, as I said, we're regulated by the Kansas Insurance Department. We annually file our financials with them, quarterly reporting the financials to them. They come in every three years and do sit in our office and do kind of a full audit. So there's that regulation we have. <laughs> 
We have biennial every every two years. Uh, our reinsurer, who I mentioned earlier, that covers us at that access layer, they want to know we're handling claims properly so it doesn't get to their layer, right? So they come in, and in fact, their auditor was just in our office last week, and they look at how are we reserving practices? Are we taking advantage of subrogation opportunities? Do we uh, investigate claims thoroughly? Are we handling the defense of the matter effectively? Um, so they're really looking at you know, how effectively claims are being managed. And then, of course, they have annual financial audits that are reviewed and approved by the board. There you'll see a list of the KK members on a map. Hodgman is the newest member, uh, so they're not highlighted there, but they, they just joined effective August 1st. Um, I encourage you to talk to those commissioners about that decision. Um, and then how are we governed? Um, I sort of hinted at this, but basically, you know, we are governed by the members. So. Uh, they hired me as the executive, but uh, they have a seven-member board of trustees. Uh, they meet monthly, uh, so they're looking at, again, our financials, our actuarial, they look at our coverage document, um, uh, they provide oversight of me and my staff, um, and those, uh, those seven members are elected by the board, or excuse me, by the, uh, by the membership. Those are the, the office, office holders there, you can see we have a president, Vice President, Secretary. We have a financial controller who uh, conducts uh, sort of mini audits uh, every every few months of um, how you know uh, how we're handling handling the finances, how we're handling the cash, that sort of thing. And we also have a claims controller who comes in and looks at the claim files and makes sure those are being handled properly. And then we have those committees listed there. The one I'll highlight there for you is the, the investment committee. Because we take in this cash, pay out losses, pay our expenses, and hopefully still have a little left over to continue to build those net assets, we have to do something with those funds. So we do invest them um, conservatively, um, typically in government bonds. Um, we do have a very small amount. It's a lot of their Kansas law put into private uh, equities. Uh, so very small amount goes into that. Uh, but the, that committee looks at uh, the investment performance and makes decisions with the help of advisors on where that money gets placed. Uh, slide 12, you'll see this is why our expenses, expense load is so low. Uh, we have myself um, and then an administrative assistant. We have basically two claim adjusters. Uh, Jess Vaughn Steel's worked for us for nearly 15 years, handles nothing but property, auto physical damage, large equipment loss, um, deals with it all day, every day. Uh, it's a friendly voice on the other end of the phone and, and handles things very expeditiously. Uh, Justin Farrell is um, uh, an attorney. Uh, he, will, he provides training in areas of law enforcement, uh, employment practices, liability, uh, but also handles our liability claims. Larry Sharp is a former commissioner uh, who gets out to meet with the members and show them how their losses are and remind them of the services and remind, you know, he'll come around once a year and talk to you about here are the services we have available, here's what you're using, here's what you're not using, and here's what we think you could do to help reduce your losses. Uh, member obligations, this is just very similar to what you would have with your normal insurance, just promptly report occurrences, cooperate with us in adjusting the claim, uh, you know, provide your exposure and loss data to us, and uh, timely pay your contribution. <laughs> Let me just go over the coverages really quick. Um, we provide general liability coverage, which is uh, often your, just your slips and falls, your premises liability. Uh, employee benefits liability, if you make an error, or your staff person makes an error in the administration of a, a benefit plan that, that uh, results in some kind of economic loss, that would be covered there. Uh, auto liability is, you know, how do you get when you hit somebody or hit something? Law enforcement liability could be your jail, uh, jail claims could be, um, you know, excessive force, those, those sorts of things. Public officials liability is, is errors and omissions essentially for you and all the public officials at the county. Um, uh, covered under that is employment practices liability and that's probably the most frequent loss, type of loss under there. So if you have a sexual harassment or discrimination or wrongful termination claim, that's where that would be covered. And then this is a cyber liability is really an emerging risk uh, that we're seeing for public entities around the country. We actually had a county experience the cyber loss a couple of years ago. Um, now that you know we're storing data electronically, if that data gets hacked in some way or, or released in some way, maybe an employee leaves a laptop somewhere, uh, or somebody hacks into the system and, it, and it's happening all over the country, um, 
Kansas law actually requires that you take mitigating steps, and one of those is likely going to be setting up credit monitoring for all the parties that are impacted. So if you have maybe 5,000 records or 10,000 records uh, sitting on a, in a file and it gets hacked or, or breached in some way, you don't know that it's being used. You don't know what's going to happen to it, but it doesn't matter. You now have to notify the affected parties, set up credit monitoring, and that can be as much as uh, anywhere from fifty to one hundred dollars per um, per individual. So it gets very expensive, and that's a coverage that's included in this program. The limits we provide up to the tort caps in Kansas, which is five hundred thousand per occurrence, um, and then we for for claims that are not governed by the tort cap, which would be like the federal cause of action, could be a law enforcement liability claim, could be employment practices, age discrimination claim. Um, those are governed by federal statute, so the tort cap would not apply. If you had a, uh, uh, anybody driving out of state for any reason for a conference or pick up an inmate, uh, that they would be exposed to a loss greater than the tort cap. So in those situations, we provide up to $2 million in limits. The property coverage uh, we provide what's called all risk coverage, which basically in the old days they used to have uh, called name peril policies. So they try to name all the perils that they would cover you for. The problem, of course, with that approach is what didn't they think of? <laughs> so uh, the best kind of coverage you can get is what we call all risk, which basically just grants the coverage and just lists the things we're not going to cover, and that's our approach. Um, we provide catastrophic uh, coverage for things like flood, earthquake, and terrorism. Um, we, de we definitely have seen commercially insured uh, counties that are not covered for those for those perils. Uh, we also provide equipment breakdown that would be like a boiler explosion, um, and the limits there are up to five hundred million dollars. The property deductible is five hundred. The equipment breakdown is a thousand. I failed to mention on the liability. Typically, there's no deductible. You can take a higher deductible to lower your cost if you'd like. Uh, and then there's crime coverage. Um, the most common loss there would be an employee theft. Um, this, this is another one probably along with the cyber that surprises people a lot. Um, typically it's a long time trusted employee. Nobody saw it coming. Um, they've been taking just little bits over a period of years. Um, uh, shared with Hodgman the, the largest loss. We used to tell people the largest loss we've seen is about 10 to 15 million. Uh, there was a small town in Illinois, I mean a small town, that had a $35 million loss, crime loss. And it was an employee just taking little bits under the internal controls radar for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. I forget how long. And it just built up. So they can get pretty sizable. Um, just something to be aware of. Again, um, on slide 18, it, it, we just show our, our net asset position there. Um, you can see that, that our net assets continue to grow year after year. We're very proud of that. Um, again, it's in part because of the way we conservatively fund. Um, it's in part because of the, the work we do to keep losses low. And, um, and then this enables us to not only provide a stable program, but to come back and say, hey, we're going to provide these additional services that the board wants, the members want, at no additional cost. Um, we can take that from our net assets. We also have a uh, rate stabilization program, so we're already providing stable rates, but um, we're, we're just ending and we're looking at renewing what we call a three-year rate stabilization program. The expiring program basically guaranteed our county members and you wouldn't experience more than a 2% uh, increase in rates uh, if you kept uh, losses or your loss ratio below 60%, um, but no more than 5%. And so we're looking again at renewing that program. But it's that net asset position that really allows us to take on, take that program on. Uh, services, if I could just highlight a few of these. Um, we have a program that's been around actually a long time um, called Attorney Assist. And it provides your employees, your supervisors, your department heads, um, unlimited access to a team of, of lawyers. I say employment attorneys, but really the sheriff can call and, and ask law enforcement questions because the attorneys that we have on this have been representing our counties for years. And there's no cost to do it. There's no limit. Nobody's tracking the hours that you spend on the phone. Uh, but it's to help you mitigate any potential loss. So before that department wants to make terminate that employee, they can call up the attorney and say, here's what I've got. Do I need to do anything else? Or can I go ahead and terminate? They can get that advice here. 
And KCAMP really is unaware of it. We don't know the facts of the situation. Uh, the attorneys give us a report that just say which counties called in and how much time they're spending on it so we can kind of track costs. But, but, but we, we don't know the details of the, of the facts unless it turns into a claim. We also provide contract review. If you have contracts with service providers or tenant users of your facilities, we'll look at those contracts, give you recommendations on identification and insurance requirements. Just had a, um, an entity call regarding a fireworks vendor. Uh, they wanted to know, you know what, what's put in that contract, how much, what type of insurance, how much insurance to require. Um, we provide defensive driving training. Uh, most of K work provides that probably far more than we do. Um, we also have a driving simulator. Um, we have an online, both of us have an online university. Um, so there's a listing of courses that we send out to you each quarter. Um, members, or I'm sorry, uh, member employees, county employees can go online and just take the training right at their desk. And then you can get a report as often as you want, showing again which employees are taking it, what classes they're taking, and document that training for yourselves. We do on site training and seminars. Our training will come out to do training on employment practices or law enforcement liability, or if there's another topic that you need, we can certainly address that. Um, this is again where the money is getting returned to you. We have a law enforcement tuition reimbursement program. We reimburse the cost for sheriff employees to, to uh, attend KHP training academy courses. Uh, we provide uh, uh, a loss control credit if you're doing certain things to mitigate your own losses. Uh, we have a risk avoidance grant. So uh, sheriffs may want to buy, for example, uh, recording devices for their vehicles or for their persons. Um, and they can submit those requests and, and we'll reimburse up to $2,000 annually. Um, we do have on our website, the member portal, we'll have uh, model policies and procedures for law enforcement as well as employee employment handbook. Uh, anything else you want to cover in terms of services? Okay, so that's, I mean, that's Kate Camp in a nutshell. We're, you know, we're Always happy to, uh, to provide you a quote if, if, you, if you're serious about uh, considering cooling as an option for the county. Um, I'm going to answer your questions again. Mine's a whole lot simpler. David did a good job explaining the pools. Um, ours operates, we're sister pools, we're put together. Actually, K Camp was put together in 91 and K Work would come in 92. Multi-line pools are a little different. I, there are probably 25 different comp pools in the state of Kansas. Everything from the, uh, the livestock operators mm -hmm. to the builders to the associations all the way through. So uh, there's a lot of work comp pools out there. There's, uh, there's a couple different work comp pools. There's the Carrot Kansas Eastern Regional Insurance Trust that does the same thing we do, except it only does it on the far east part of the state. So there's a bunch of us. Real simple. Uh, this is, I've been doing this since 93, and I think this is the first time I've had an opportunity to even ask Stafford County to allow us to do that. And I appreciate that. Okay? Uh, we've, uh, we've grown, doubled our, our staff. When I came into uh, the operation, there was only me and, and one other person, and now there's four of us. And, we're, um, and I'm a part-timer, and we have another part-timer. Uh, we're, we're growing all the time. Uh, I do loss prevention, I do marketing, uh, I guess I do whatever the day calls for, so it's going to be a lot first. Just uh, first page here, just a greeting letter to you, just uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, behind that is our, our board of trustees, as you can see we have uh, four commissioners, uh, three clerks on our board. Now what we like to do and what we put in our bylaws, actually we were doing it before we put in our bylaws, but we made it part of the bylaws a few years ago, is we have a representative for each of the six districts throughout Kansas. So no matter where you're at, you have someone on this board that you go to meetings with. Someone you can contact that you know. Now I've got two of these, let me show you the next page back. These are just some coverage and limits things that we do. Uh, 
I can do 500,000 or I can do a million. A lot of our members that are a million, that's the kind of way it started out. And then we started having a few of the members coming in that wanted the 500,000 dollar limit. We can do it either way. Okay? We provide excess coverage just like all the other companies do. Uh, everybody writes excess over their primary limit. Uh, some uh, so stipulations, independent contractors, subcontractors, we require the certificates of insurance on file cover you to cover us. Anybody that you bring here to do a job that doesn't have their own insurance, you automatically pick up that work on coverage. Okay. Um, we lost control and I'll show you some of that if uh, we get farther back in the section here. Autopsies are required on anything that was unattended to make sure we know what the cause of death was. Overtime and pay, uh, vacation pay, sick pay, holidays, that's all excluded. Uh, under the work comp, you can only take regular work hours. In other words, so if they're working overtime and they're getting a third more, we only get that two thirds, and not the full. Um, Self-insured pool, which uh, which Dave did a great, great job of uh, of explaining to you how it works. We do exactly the same thing Dave does. Or, or actually, by state statute, uh, it's 70-30. We can use 70 percent for claims, 30 percent for administration. Uh, we don't ever get that 30 percent. Volunteer workers automatically picked up. Have you, if you haven't already done that, uh, you know, have you filed a form for volunteers? Mm -hmm. You file a form for the volunteers with the state, and therefore any volunteers that you bring in to help with elections uh, are automatically picked up in the work home. Uh, under G down here, anybody in community service, there's another form for that. Uh, if you want put that form in place that picks up any community service people that you have working for you. Safety National is our excess carrier. Uh, as you can see, they're a pooling operation too. Just, and then the RT is our EMA coverage. So we find that. Under tab one, we do the same thing. Camp does. We have a committee that can, uh, reviews our investment every month, and then quarterly they get together with the, the people out of uh, the banks and so forth. Money is uh, bonds are being done to uh, review it, do overall review. I've given you uh, June 30th financials, and as you can see, the total fund balance is 15 million right now. Total liabilities and fund balance 24 million. Breakdown of our statement of operations is behind that. Under tab two is our claim service. IMA, uh, we don't do any house claims. IMA out of Wichita actually does the claim for us. But we have a dedicated person, Marla Dittman, who does uh, work on claims for us down there. And of course, she has a staff that she works with, Paul Davis is risk manager. This is their best practices. This is the standards that uh, Marla has to meet as far as handling claims. This is IMA's best standards. Under three, uh, law prevention services. Uh, we do safety meetings. We do safety meetings on a bunch of different things. Uh, uh, ergonomic reviews. Uh, I started one yesterday over in Reno County. Uh, we have a video library that's kind of a combination video library. But if you can tap into, all you do is uh, uh, pick a video that you want, and I have a video list in here, and they'll send it to you. The only thing we ask you is to send it back a couple weeks. Okay? Uh, they're all free to you. Inspections, uh, we have three people now, and I'm a part-timer, that can come do inspections for you. And uh, we do OSHA-style inspections. Uh, I spent uh, six hours with the Kansas Department of Labor inspector uh, a month ago, going through uh, Neosho County. He's a new guy. We do certified training courses, defensive driving, as David mentioned. Uh, defensive driving is done for the county at no cost. SIBO uh, classes, I do SIBO ambulance classes. We set up obstacle courses. And the only cost there, and most of this other stuff, is uh, the cost of the books. Um, I do work zone safety. I'm authorized to do certified do work, uh, work zone safety. and. Uh, uh, powered industrial trucks. If you've not heard of a powered industrial truck, forklift. <laughs> <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> no, when you get down to it, uh, 
and look at the way the <coughs> ocean wrote this. Yeah. They call it a power industrial truck. And a power industrial truck is anything that moves, picks up, moves, or stacks materials. <laughs> now, how many pieces of equipment does the county have that picks, moves, and stacks material? Uh, I do a little skid steer loader class, that's a cat class. Uh, next page back is all the different classes that are available. And behind that's kind of a list of the video library for you. I have given you a copy of our bylaws. David mentioned it's in the local agreement. So you can go to the bylaws if you want. The resolution was the last two pages in the back of this. And then under tab five is a list of the counties that are in the pool and other operations. We have a couple of hospitals. Uh, we have the Northwest Regional Recycling Center, which is the conglomerate up in, up in Colby that a bunch of the counties got together, put together a recycling center up there. Minor operation over Marion County, Harvey Marion, Marion County CDDO, which is just a money place, just for, disabled. We have the MTAA, which is the Metropolitan Big Airport Authority, which is part of Shawnee County. And behind that, for the back page, is, a, is the map of our county. We're called pretty easy is, it's not easy of course, is we have to follow statutes. I mean, right down the line. We're regulated by the case of the Sheriff's Department just, just the same as David mentioned on, on his side. They do actual reviews for us and the reason I kind of snickered when David mentioned uh, them being in our office is it's like you, you, they end up in our office, they're there two weeks or more, <laughs> and you have to take care of them. And you pay for them to be there. <laughs> So it gets kind of costly the longer they stay there. <laughs> so we try to give them everything and get them out the door. Right. That's kind of the breakdown on the K-Work side. It's real simple. We have a, a network of different uh, doctors and facilities that uh, we work with. Um, you, as uh, the employer, has the right to for, for, for first visit. In other words, you can select the clinic or the doctor you want the employees to go to for the first visit. And then, of course, uh, depending on what the doctor says, we will take over from there. But the statute, you have that right. Questions? Can we totally confuse you? <laughs> A lot of information. <laughs> well, when it comes right down to it, there's only really Two people that provide coverage, two operations that provide coverage for work on, for uh, counties, and that's EMC and Coolmills. And if you're not have taken the opportunity to look at the pricing on both of them, you're probably not really looking at what price you're going to get. Well, what we found with with Hodgman was, uh, I, I have to admit, I was a little surprised with how with the difference in the coverage. We were already about 13% cheap. We were 13% cheaper. K-Work was even more, you know, there was even greater savings there. But our coverage, the coverage differences were just substantial. I mean, they doubled their liability limits in most cases. Um, the, 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 again, they weren't even getting coverage for earthquake or flood. We didn't think was a problem in Kansas until, you know, Oklahoma started, <laughs> started going. But, um, you know, flood cut down on flood coverage. They had what we call actual cash value uh, on that, you know, on your property policy. Um, I joked with them, I said, when I was there, I've been with public any risk management since the 90s, and I uh, ran a pool uh, prior to this one, and uh, I was an accreditation consultant for, for, for uh, the accrediting body of pools, and, and uh, worked with cities, counties, school districts for years. And we would always go in and look at the property policy, and each, you know, you'd like, is it all risk? Okay, yeah. It's, always all risk. And there's a replacement cost value, which is, you know, what, what's the cost to replace this table today? I don't want a table that's 20 years old. I want to you know, replace it. Um, almost always. I, mean, I don't know that I had seen it public with, with ACB. They had ACB on their courthouse. What, what does that mean? Well, when, when that, if that courthouse, God forbid, burns down, and they say, well, here's our policy limit. Okay, that's the most they'll pay. They're going to value it 
at a de on a depreciated basis. Well, how do you depreciate a courthouse that was built in 1920? It's going to be depreciated substantially. And so the actual insurance on that building is nowhere near what they thought it was. In addition to that, the limit that was being provided was not, I talked to an appraiser, it was probably two million under where it should have been. So we were able to provide substantially higher property limits at replacement cost value for, for catastrophic perils as well as the traditional perils. Um, uh, I think their, their property premium went from like 18,000 down to eight. Um, so it's really worth this girl saying to look at because I think you may find something similar that you're able to really broaden the coverage, get higher limits, all of that. It, it, what far more services than you're probably getting from your commercial carrier to help you keep your losses down. The counties can't afford in every situation to have a full-time risk manager to do this stuff. And that's why the pools are there. Um, so I think you'll find you'll be able to get all of those things and even under reduced cost. So I encourage you to at least take a look. So what do we have to do? Um, well, we would winter renewal. So, okay. um, I would suggest that we get copies of your policies so we can see what you have. Um, we can prepare a, um, a quote uh, so we can at least make it apples to apples. I mean, if we're providing our own, we'll just show that. But we want to at least provide what you have now, and then uh, we can put a quote together for you. Um, what would be involved if you end up going with us is you actually execute the interlocal agreement at a commission meeting um, or when becoming a member of the agency we get that approved by the AG it's filed with the Secretary of State recorded with your registered deeds um, and um, go from there I the only thing I would ask is that the process be fair um, we have had situations in the past where um, uh, counties are just going to get a quote uh, just to get give some leverage to the local agent with the commercial carrier so we spin our wheels, we go through this whole one process, and at the end of the day, we had no chance. Um, I mean, Carl and, and Kay Camp had one last year where I think it was $70,000 the county could to save. Yeah. Better coverage, $70,000 savings, and they looked at it walked away. Um, so, you know, obviously we're not interested in going down that road. Um, if they had joined me, I, I'd give them a bid two years before that, and if they joined then, just my savings for the two, for those two years, plus the savings Dave's talking about, they just saved $105,000 in three years. Even the clerk mentioned to them that was a full mill on their limits. So, so I mean, as long as it's a it, it's a fair process, whether you want to use, you know, you don't have to. Eat. You can issue an RFP. I can give you a boilerplate kind of RFP to work with, um, or you can just say no, just bring in quotes. Um, we'll have sealed bids, or you can just have us come in on the same day and present. Um, however, you want to do it. As long as it's a fair process, we're. Okay. It doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. It hurt. The key with one of the requirements is to be a KAC member. Do what? Which no, no, just, no, just a county. The same people. Just, just a Kansas county. Well, yeah. You're still there. You have to so be in both K camp and K work? No, you do not. Two okay. separate pools. Yeah. But by going together, a lot of the commercial companies will not write the work all by itself. That's kind of what they found as we came work came in after came in. Mm -hmm. Well, we've heard like the EMC mentioned several times today. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it's, there's, I mean, there's basically EMC and Travelers. Travelers EMC is the, the only one. other commercial workout market. Mm -hmm. uh, travelers would be uh, somebody we see. We probably see them less frequently. Those are really the only two other commercial options that I'm aware of. You, you mentioned that those companies can you know, come in, take a loss for a couple of years, and then raise your rates. I'm assuming you're saying that you, you, your pool, we can tell for what other counties are paying. That couldn't happen in, through KCAMP then as well? or Could it happen where we under sort of yeah. low ball it for yeah. a lot? The way our rating is set up, we, we can't. I mean, we. we um, we basically underwrite the risk, so we know what we need to collect um, in order to cover your historical losses. As Carl said, you know, 70 percent of our funds have to be available under the regs to cover those losses. And so, uh, the way we rate it, um, we look at your loss experience and make sure that we're collecting enough to pay that plus the expense. And um, 
because I just won't see it. I mean, you know, I think that it bears out there. Um, we wouldn't keep members very long if we, you know, if we played that game. Members definitely feel a part of the or, you know, their organization, and you know, if we were to put them in a situation where we're, you know, this is your rate today, and then tomorrow it's 30 percent higher, uh, they, they wouldn't stay with the pool very long. And so, um, you know, just don't do that. I've looked at our historical. I joined Pink Camp this year as an executive, um, and I've looked at our historical rates, and typically. You know, the largest in increase I've seen in the last few years is six to eight percent. But those were members that had substantial losses um, and with no sign of improvement. You know, so it's like, okay, well, you know, we're gonna have to get more to collect on this. We've um, never asked a member to leave. Uh, board's position is you go help them. That's what we have to do. I don't think you guys, you guys have never asked anybody to leave. That doesn't mean we don't go through an underwriting process. We do go through an underwriting process. In fact, uh, we'll go through an underwriting process, and, and my paperwork has to go to Safety National for them to give them okay. So that underwriting process can be a little bit of work. I mean, getting the policies helps a lot because we get a lot of the information from that. For example, in your MC policies, you would have all your schedules of all your vehicles, all your buildings, all your contractors' equipment. Well, that's 90% I mean, of what we need. And then there'll be an application, which is only about, I think it's five or six pages. It's not bad. Um, you know, things like how many law enforcement personnel do you have? You know, what's your jail capacity? Um, miles of road. Just some, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Um, so you just fill out that application. No, we, we actually have significant risk there since we farm out prisoners to other jails and we have the transportation risk. Sure. So. Commissioner Fairchild was being a bit facetious. <laughs> think that we don't have an exposure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and, and the county commission is, is serious, you know, about that exposure. Uh, I'm when I get time, I'm kind of like a committee of one, figuring out what size jail is feasible for Stafford County and how much will it cost. Um, but again, we do have, we're one of the few counties, I think there's five in Kansas that don't have a jail. Yeah, I mean, some of our members actually receive inmates from other, other counties. So it's the application that we steal. It's a five pager and, and then law state. Steve. Just want to see your loss experience with a five year history. So do you want to continue with this? To yeah. get a quote? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to mention your name. Uh, and just walk in. Yeah, it must have been a yes, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed on your on the board of directors, I was just going right. to say, well, we know him. Yeah. Yeah. As well as Stan. We, we broke that up. Yeah. Everybody yeah. had somebody. Yeah. They dropped it. I just thought I'd come along to support if any questions from a fellow commissioner or anything. I'd be glad to. So, you know, I can just set up. Mainly the sojourn. <laughs> and rest. Rest. <laughs> yeah. A long way from Reefer. Yeah. We're going to get a quote so and look at it. Interesting. Yep. I'm sorry, my timing was off. I had, I had 11 o'clock in my book. And Did you really? I should have, should have, I should have caught, checked to double check. So. Thank you, gentlemen. I think so. We just say yes. You guys yeah. start, or do we have to fill out a form or anything? Um, we will send an application and the request for the law state. Spell that out. You just hand that to your carrier, and then um, we'll just go from there. Okay. My travel attorney is all be through. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Steve. Well, yeah, you've got something to say about Brown and go ahead. Well, it's been good for Harbor County, and uh, we've gotten along well with the program. And like I said, I'm Board of Trustees. I represent the South Central area of, of, of the state and would represent you all if, if you became members of KWORK. And so I think through the through your Hunter Clayton, it's been familiar with different 
take work in Cape Camp. And it's been a good, uh, good for most of the counties, and uh, feel like we do a real good job of working. And, and really, as, as, as a as a member, it's not uh, it's not a private. So I don't know what your situation is here, who you've used in the past, or whatever. But uh, I sure recommend thinking about it strong, strongly. Going with us, and be glad to. Answer any questions that y'all might have through the, as, as it comes up, either now or or later. And it's like I said, it's, it's not that far up here, so I'm on the way to the board meeting tomorrow at okay. <laughs> Topeka, so I just swung, swung this way. So, so, so. Good. And, uh, I know it's like getting a little drier up here. And, uh, <laughs> yes, it is. And we need a sprinkle. I was, I was out in my pasture yesterday, and the, the short grasses are turning brown and stuff, but the rest of the stuff, the, Side oaks and stuff, just uh, need to find a good seed cutter. Get seed, get some seed, <laughs> seed cutter on that stuff. Yeah. And my county clerk said to tell you, neither, 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 right? Yeah, I'll tell you hello. So, but I've not been in the courthouse here before, so I want to take that opportunity to tour. <laughs> well, you can stick around. We're going to have another meeting at, at 11. Yeah. Well, that's the part of Yeah, you have lunch. It's, it's concerning what? Optometry. Oh, optometry. No, pick, 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 City Council Mayor types with an Ellsworth. Uh, Ellsworth is in K Camp K work. Are they yeah. happy with it? Um, let me talk to Jan Andrews, my county clerk. She would, you know, I have, have more, ha more hands on it. Too, been real happy with it. Yeah, the, the largest claims against El Ellsworth County has bounced back yeah, between K Camp and EMC over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the biggest lawsuit we had against Ellsworth County is some idiot hung himself in jail. That's when we were covered by EMC. And that, they, they're, they're a law firm that did a crackerjack job in fighting that, which to me counts for something. Um, uh, I will say this for KCAMP, they'll let you know every, I think three or four times a year, they'll send to me a little report showing what our county losses and exposure are and saying if you don't, get the sheriff's office to stop wrecking patrol cars, you know, we're going to raise your deductible and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I, that impresses me, that transparency. One year we managed to wreck seven patrol vehicles. Well, I, I seriously thought some of these people were wanting new vehicles, so here, I'll just, you know, it, it's all car, car gear, you know, except for one which was car cop. Car cop. I don't recommend car cow. No. no. <laughs> uh, I didn't get the memo. You didn't get the memo. Oh, I know. I, I, was a week, was, I was a week ahead of you. Yeah, he thought it was last week. I wore a purple shirt and purple tie last week. You're not going to, it's just a bunch, it's yeah. not. Yeah, you, 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 you could.